as you can see, Lucas is doing some cool things with his district as well, with gaming with teachers that he's kind of helped and shown them different resources that he has. And so it's a great way to motivate students as well as teachers. Uh, so using both gaming and badging. Here's my question for you. How do you game life? Like, what are things that you do in life that kind of game it yourself? Maybe it's not a, it's definitely not a video game unless you make video games, but what are things in life you do that you make a game out of? I don't, yeah, I'm like, I don't know if I game anything so much as try to make it social, which is an aspect of gaming, but that's not necessarily making it a game. Well, I, I mean, think the way we do our health plan at OSU is a really good yeah, example of that, and it's been by and large, from what I can tell, very effective, which is in order to get off the HMO and get like the good health plan, you have to do stuff that is in line with preventative care, which we know we need, and, yeah. and, and of course, all the statistics kind of forecast what that'll look like if we don't, at least for the, the health of our community. So I think that's one way, but sorry, I'm, I know I'm monopolizing time, but you know, I think anytime you Let's say you set a goal at your house and write it down and put it on your wall or inside your locker or anything mm -hmm. like that. You've, you've already taken the element of identifying the objective or the mission and it's in a place where you see it. And I think that's one thing that games do is just take whatever those aspects so we, of our lives are and kind of make them explicit and say, here, go do this. When we see it everywhere, like how many people have a Fitbit that yep. constantly motivates them to get up or... Uh, Apple Watch or whatever it may be, like, it seems like there's little games built into so many things now, and even just apps on our phone that reward us for the most ridiculous things, like opening the app in general, like, five days in a row. Yeah, there's, like, <laughs> that, there's Congratulations. a leaf on the Prius. Yep, and there's, like, the, the movie, there's, like, a movie app where, like, I forget what cinema it is, but, like, if you, you set it and then you don't touch your phone throughout yeah, the like, movie, you, do you, shirt, get, yeah. you get rewards what? for at the theater. Yeah, you can get, like, a free small popcorn the next time you attend. Or but something I gotta like read that. ahead and make sure there's nothing scary about to happen. <laughs> you can't. True. <laughs> Spoiler alert. You can't. Yeah, or even so, to-do lists, right? I think to-do lists are a great way to kind of game. A lot of people do to kind of game a fire their life, or maybe trying to get your inbox to zero. Like that's, yes. that is a game, right? That like that, that, uh, that's a, that is a that's never, it's a twisted game. It's a hard game. <laughs> <It is. laughs> that's exactly if what Chris Isaac was saying about. If you make enough folders, you can totally win that game. Uh, I, uh, easy for you to say. Yeah. So, do you guys know anyone currently playing games in their classroom? I know we, I mean, obviously know a lot of teachers. <clears throat> I know Chris McNutt mm -hmm. at Global Impact STEM does it. I know um, Sal mm -hmm. at Kenston. He tries to gamify little pieces or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like Brock does, like, again, little pieces or just tries to make it a little more like entertaining. Um, a couple weeks ago, a bunch of us went out to Global Impact and was, was sitting in Chris's class, and that's the first time I kind of realized that he was using gaming. So we seen it as a great opportunity to see if he'd sit down with us and chat. And fortunately, at our last PD, he took time out to kind of hang out with us and tell us how he was doing it. So uh, I'm Chris McNutt. I'm a social studies teacher at Global Impact STEM Academy. And when we were in your room, uh, earlier, we, we noticed that you had a, a, a method of trying to kind of uh, have your students being further engaged with what they were doing. Can you explain what, what you do? That sure. So I use gamification heavily in my classroom uh, okay. for every single unit. Uh, and really the goal of gamification is not just to like integrate small like little things to make it into a game, but literally transform the entire class into a game itself. Uh, so every unit that I have, students earn experience points. Uh, usually it kind of differs unit to unit, uh, just like it was like a role-playing game like back in like the 80s or 90s. Uh, and in the App Store today, which mm -hmm. our students are playing for sure. Yeah, yeah, so I mean it connects back to what they hearken that's fun. So like the basis behind this is kind of like why would I play a game on the iPhone where I'm like an air traffic controller? Uh, and it's like something that's not fun at all. Uh, but yeah, I feel like I'm rewarded for doing it. What if we took that same exact idea and applied it to something that was a little bit more academic uh, and I would enjoy what I'm learning? Uh, so the basis behind this is that if I can make as many classes as possible into something that's fun to play and where I get instantaneous feedback that's positive, mm -hmm. uh, I'll enjoy the class a lot better. So what does that look like as a student? So how do they earn these experience points? So 
In my first unit, it's very basic just to introduce the concept. Uh, they earn basically 100 experience points for every assignment that they complete, so it's very easy to keep track of. And as they earn those experience points, there's a little table that they have, depending on what class they pick, and they earn different incentives for doing so. So it's just very streamlined. And then as we go on, it gets more and more complicated. Like for example, in a later unit, they have guilds, and their points are averaged across their entire guild to encourage them to collaborate because if our points are you know, shared, I need to make sure that you're doing the work as well. Uh, yeah. And then we, there's like a leaderboard and there's like different stuff like that. And how do you keep track of all these points? Uh, What's your system? Usually I just use Google Forms okay. or just Google in general. So it's real time and they can mm -hmm. see it after you update it. Yeah. How often do you update? Uh, probably weekly. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't really that hard because I grade it based on completion and effort. Sure. So it's nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, because the goal isn't to see if they're understanding everything for this. It's more are you trying and doing uh, just over and over again. Uh, which is just like a game and how it works. Mm -hmm. Typically, you repeat the exact same thing over and over again until you get it correct, so it's mastery-based. So what do the students, besides being on top of a leaderboard that you talked about, what, what do they get out of those experience points? So I like to mix it up with a bunch of different kind of crazy stuff. It can be anywhere from just like extra code on a test, but I also like things like uh, talking with another student during the test and asking for advice, cheating off another student. P people like really like that one. Uh, I like that one a lot. Uh, you could do like ask the audience type stuff. I did one where it wasn't the class-based one, but it was later on where they all took the test as an entire group, like as a team. And based on how many assignments on average were completed, there were whole class rewards, like hints like hidden in the classroom, literally. Uh, or things like you can take your questions up to me and ask me if that's right and that kind of stuff and then checking it with the whole class. So if you look at the grades and look at the experience points, is it, is it fairly same curve when, it looks, when you're looking at the students? So is it generally the students with the highest grades have the most experience points and on down? Or is there some variation? I mean, there's definitely variation, uh, but I found that after implementing this, this I did this later on, uh, sure. not when I first started, kids have a tendency to do more because they realize, hey, if I do all the work, I get extra incentives and it's easier. However, since you're doing all the work, the test was easier in the first place. <laughs> so it's just kind of like a hidden way of disguising, this is what you should be doing anyway. To encourage them yeah. to work more and work harder. Yeah. What are some things that you watch out for in, in the sense of like anytime you're trying to like uh, do something new, right, as a teacher. You want to make sure you're, you're being critical of the process of, of gamifying your classroom. Mm -hmm. So what are some like, of those things you want to watch out for whenever so you're trying to do The that? thing that you don't want to do, and this might go against kind of like what you're saying in well, this slide, sure. I don't want to sound yeah. critical, but just adding in badges onto your class is not gamification. Yeah. Uh, because every single thing that you do in the classroom that has to have a game aspect to it has to be something that's a challenge that you feel good for doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're going to give out a badge, it has to feel like I earned it and it wasn't just something stupid that I'd done on the side. It has to have that feeling of accomplishment. Also, consistently throughout this, making sure that students have the, some kind of voice in what they're doing so it isn't just completely top down. Consistently getting feedback and like, I have at least like a choice that I can pick like one, two, or three on what I want to do. Okay. That's very important as well. Also, the biggest thing out of all of this, even past like the XP points or anything like that, is literally making the classes into a game. That's the biggest thing out of all of this. Like for example, like I'll teach mercantilism, which is about trading. Mm -hmm. Instead of just talking about it or them reading about it, which is pretty boring, we might do a little bit of reading, but then we'll play a game that demonstrates that, just basically adapting like a simulation or anything like that, mm -hmm. and it'll work. Uh, either online or in person yeah, simulation. Or in person. It's so easy, honestly, just to make like a basic simulation in history class, mm -hmm. uh, which is like dice, that it's okay and it's pretty fun. It's more fun than if I were talking about it, so that kind of stuff. Great, so yeah, you set up these situations where it's randomized with dice and what they have to do or what mm -hmm. situations happen. That's, sure. that's neat. How could this be, how do you think kind of your style of doing this, could this be going through other subjects? Like if you're told you're teaching mm -hmm. science or algebra. Definitely. Tomorrow, I, I, how, do you have any other ideas yeah. on how p other people Science has that? a lot of crazy stuff. The good news is that science actually already has a lot of this stuff available for online. Okay. Like I know there's, there's like multiple like role playing games and uh, like dice and card games mm -hmm. that like teach like survival of the fittest and all these different concepts. Okay. Uh, kind of like a lot of like where you take on the role of like animals or stuff like that, that sure. works very well. Uh, plus, there's a ton of chemistry stuff that I've seen. How do you normally see this? Like, social media? Yeah. Uh, there's a there's lot of like good stuff. If you follow, like, educational blogs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Gamification is, like, a huge buzzword right now. Or, right. like, NPR podcast, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of great books. 
uh, that kind of go into like field guides for gamification. What any that you recommend? Uh, I know there's one called Gamifying Education, okay. a field book. It's literally called that. Okay. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, uh, the okay. name of the author right now, but sure. uh, that is definitely one. And what are some what are some first steps of someone who says, yeah, I want to I want to introduce this into my classroom? And you've already said it needs to kind of be all in, but mm -hmm. still, it could still start with a, a small bit of all in, right? Sure. So what would, yeah. what would you suggest for someone who just wants to get into this? Or other teachers at your school to say, hey, I want to do something like this too. Sure. What would you recommend? I would recommend not starting with the basic things. I wouldn't start with badges. I wouldn't start with experience points. Those things are systems focused. Those are things mm -hmm. that would take place over the whole course of the whole year. Mm -hmm. That's like a huge development. I would just take a lesson that you think is super boring or you think the kids will find super boring mm -hmm and try to find your best way to make a game out of it. Like look back at like things that you've played or uh, some kind of simulation, or some kind of idea where you give them a challenge or some kind of focus-based activity uh, and make it fun for them. I think challenges, it, you might think game, you might think like video game like right off, but literally just giving them like, uh, if it's biology and they're trying to figure out like why an organism survives, like literally just put them in place of the organism, like how are you going to survive and give them a bunch of situations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just rethinking how you look at the idea and make it fun. I mean, that's really the most basic idea there. To, to engage the students so that yeah. they're not seeing it as just yeah. reading a book or whatever, but they're actually, you know, they, they want to get into that. They want to win. They yeah. want to make it competitive experience. or make it cooperative, make it some kind of thing where I feel like I'm actually having fun doing it, which sounds so foreign in education to actually have fun while you're learning, but I think that should be a primary goal. Uh, I want to have fun in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I do, I might remember that information better, which makes me more academic in general. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thanks for your time.